currently, we're at my husband's boss's wedding. The celebration is full swing, and my husband's had a bit too much to drink. When his boss mentioned his bride's homemaking skills, my husband said, My wife can't cook, and she never cleans up. I couldn't believe he'd make fun of me like that, especially with me right there. I shot back. Should you really be critiquing your wife's housekeeping skills when you're lying about business trips to stay at your mistress's place? He looked totally shocked, and his boss just gave a confused, huh? This is just the tip of the iceberg for my revenge. I'm Vicky, 32 years old. I am a freelance certified public accountant and work remotely from home. My job as a CPA involves managing financial information, producing reports, and auditing. In simpler terms, I am self-employed and provide financial services to my clients. I married my now husband, an office worker, three years ago after a friend introduced us. I was instantly attracted to his outgoing and friendly nature. It wasn't like me, but I went out of my way to get his attention. Fast forward, and two years ago, we welcomed our daughter, Amy, into our lives. While I'd love to say everything's been a fairy tale, since getting married, I've noticed Arthur tends to slack once he feels he's secured something. He does his job, pays his bills, and isn't aggressive or mean. But he doesn't lift a finger at home, dumping all domestic and childcare duties on me, claiming that's a woman's job, right? I'm working hard out there, so quit nagging. What century is he from? I'm not asking for him to take over everything, just some support when I'm swamped. He assumes my days are a breeze. He thinks I'm lounging around, working when I feel like it. He even once quipped about my setup. It must be sweet staying at home all day. I've got piles of work, a boss to please, and clients to deal with. You wouldn't get it. Even though I'm at home, he expects me to handle all the chores. I fired back. Hold on a sec. I am working from home. Juggling that with Amy is not easy. He responded. Really? Looks to me like you're just goofing off on the computer. Wish I could work from home and take it easy without anyone seeing. He said it with a smile. I don't think he meant any harm, but it did irk me how he downplayed my work. On the bright side, he occasionally takes Amy to the park, and they play together sometimes on weekends. He always makes it a point to be home for special days like birthdays or Christmas, showering Amy and me with gifts. We've had our share of good times. That's why I've been keeping my frustrations to myself. I mean, maybe this is just how relationships are. No one's perfect, and compromise is part of the deal. I don't want to split from him. I take pride in how efficiently I juggle my remote job, house chores, and taking care of Amy. We had a system that kind of worked. But recently, his behavior has been off. He used to be a homebody on weekends, either buried in his comics or playing games. Lately, he's rarely home, often saying, I'm heading out. Don't bother with dinner for me, before heading out the door. He doesn't just disappear from home on weekends. He's also often working overtime during the week. Sometimes, he even says he has to pull an all-nighter at work and then returns the next morning. It's strange that it happens so often throughout the month, instead of just once or twice. This got me worried, so I confronted him about it one day. Hey, it feels like you've been coming back home in the mornings a lot. Plus, you're always gone on weekends. How about we spend some quality time together as a family? But his response was harsh. How can you give your husband grief when he's busting his butt for this family? 
I'm killing myself out here working for us. He gave me a fierce look, but being the kind of person I am, I didn't look away. So, where are you always heading off to? At least tell me that. I'm not telling you to stay home. I just want to be in the loop. I've been hanging out at my boss Carlos's house. His fiance loves hosting parties all the time, and since I report to him, I get invited a lot. I'm familiar with Carlos. With Ned, I've even attended one of his extravagant house parties. Carlos's fiance Sarah was a model back in the day, and it's drop dead gorgeous. Word is they are living together and planning to get married. Sarah's my age, thirty-two, but she could pass for someone in her early twenties. She's got fair, almost glowing skin and large eyes, rosy lips, and vibrant apple-colored cheeks. She's slender with a graceful frame. Even seeing her as another woman, I had to admit she was a knockout. But personality-wise, she left a lot to be desired. Sarah, I remember the first time I went to their house party, and she walked up to me. That's a memory I wish I could shake, but can't. You're Vicky, right? Heard your cooking isn't that great. Sarah remarked with a sly smile. Her comment caught me off guard, and I responded, "Who told you that?" Arthur was venting about it, said he dressed dinner time because of the bad food. Her words left me reeling. The idea of Arthur bad mouthing me to others was inconceivable. She went on, "It's okay, you know. Everyone's got something they're not great at." And just because you think your meals are tasty doesn't mean your husband agrees. Guess you have to step up your cooking game. On the face of it, you think she was trying to be supportive, but she had this laugh, like she was getting a kick out of it. What a mean lady! I thought. Who directly shares a husband's gripes with his wife? Carlos really picked a winner with her. I mumbled sarcastically to myself. Another thought crossed my mind, though. Even if they were tight, would Arthur really talk about our home life to his boss's fiance? I was about to get answers to my doubts in the worst way imaginable. It all unraveled on Amy's second birthday. I was hustling to get the room ready and the cake set up. I decided to throw a birthday bash in our large living room to make it special. Amy was taking a nap in her bedroom. The plan was to surprise her when she woke up. Arthur was pitching in, especially with the high-up decorations. But then his phone rang. He glanced at the number and seemed to hesitate. Intrigued, I probed. "What's up? If it's a call, just answer it here." No, it's work. I'd rather not mix business with family time. There might be sensitive info. With that, he exited the room. He was gone for a good half hour, deeply engrossed in his chat. When he finally came back, he looked really shaken. Out of nowhere, he raised his voice at me. I got called into work. I'm heading to the office now. Out of nowhere, I was caught off guard and tried to hold him back. Hold on, are you really going to work now? Today is Amy's birthday. He brushed past me, giving me a frustrated look. Get the picture. There are bigger things at play here. Don't hold me up. With that, he bolted out the door. I was stunned by his abrupt reaction. His words kept replaying in my mind. How could he downplay our precious Amy's birthday like that? Why would he be so thoughtless? He told me he took the day off for this. What work emergency could be more pressing than Amy's day? I decided to peek in on the sleeping girl. She looked so serene. It would break her heart to learn her dad missed her birthday when she wakes up. Not knowing how to process everything, my mind was spinning. But then 
It hit me. I checked something in the kids' room and was horrified by my find. Anger welled up inside me. Aha!、Uh-huh. So that's what's been happening. That's the real reason he dashed out. I won't forgive him for this. The next day, Arthur came home like nothing happened. Flashing a grin, he said, "Sorry about yesterday." I replied with a smile, "It's all right." But inside, I was plotting my next move. After a while, he filled me in about Carlos and Sarah's upcoming wedding. Turns out she was expecting, so they sped up their wedding plans. We got an invite, and I had my own plans for their big day. Everything was going off without a hatch at the wedding. Arthur was living it up, sipping enough to get rosy cheeks. As I nibbled my food, I kept an eye on him. Just then, the couple of the hour, Carlos and Sarah walked over. Sarah. In her stunning wedding gown, turned heads left and right. All the men there couldn't get their eyes off the princess. Smiling wide, Arthur patted Carlos on the back. Carlos, congrats! Then he asked Carlos, "What's your favorite thing about Sarah?" A bit shy, he answered, "Her cooking, I think." Chuckling, he added. That's totally not like my wife. She struggles with house stuff. Bad cook, not the best cleaner. Wish she could pick up a few tips from Sarah. It was pretty gutsy of him to diss his wife with her right there. Sarah let out a laugh at his comment, while Carlos smirked and said, "You shouldn't talk bad about your wife like that." He cautioned Arthur. Seeing my moment, I jumped in. Bad cooking and cleaning? How would you know when you're always out on fake business trip, sneaking off to your mistress's place? Both Sarah and Arthur looked surprised at my words, while Carlos blurted out a confused "What?" Pushing forward, I said to him, "Carlos, you were out of the country for a month recently, right?" Oddly enough. My husband was gone at the same time. Are you connecting the dots? At first baffled, realization dawned on his face. Wait, what are you hinting at? He asked, his voice shaking a bit. Keeping my cool, I spelled it out. It's pretty simple. Arthur was at your place the whole time, just him and Sarah. Carlos's eyes widened in shock, darting between Arthur and Sarah. My husband seemed rattled, and Sarah shot me a piercing look, biting her lip. Really? Don't throw around baseless claims. I'll take you to court for slander. Boosted by Sarah's feisty response, Arthur also began to berate me. Exactly. You think you can frame me like this? Just because you got wind of some gossip, you're pulling this ugly trick. That's low. Say you're sorry to me and Sarah now. I let their outburst roll off me, pulling out my phone and hitting play on a video. Loud and clear, the footage displayed my husband in our kids' room on a call with Sarah. Sarah, you're expecting. Whose baby is it? Wait, mine? His flustered voice followed. Carlos's expression tightened, signaling a game-changing moment. The video kept rolling. I was with you the whole month Carlos was traveling. What should we do? Neither of us wants to split from our partners, right? And then the kicker. Okay, we'll fast track the wedding. And the kid will be known as Carlos's. Best that way. If my wife finds out, it'll be a nightmare. Just keep it between us. We gotta figure out as soon as possible. The clip wrapped up. Since I played it so loudly, everyone around us was all ears, setting a scene of buzz. A nanny cam in the little one's room had caught the whole thing. 
I got it because our toddler Amy is a little firecracker and prone to getting into mischief. I kept quiet about the camera, anticipating Arthur would grumble, going, "Total waste of cash. We don't need it." So, clueless about the camera, he chose the kids' room for the risky call with Sarah. What followed was sheer pandemonium, with Carlos absolutely fuming. Sarah, what is this about? You said it was my baby. Were you playing me all along? And you, Arthur, after everything I've done for you, you chase my fiance? Sarah started crying. I'm so sorry. I lost myself. Please, just calm down. Arthur scrambled for words. I can't apologize enough. Hear me out. There's a reason behind it. The scene was bedlam. Needless to say, the wedding was off. We'll hash this out later, Carlos muttered to me, lowering his gaze. With eyes blazing, Carlos escorted a weeping Sarah out, followed by both of their families. She was in for a storm from both sides. What remained was a mix of bewildered guests, me, and shell-shocked Arthur. You planning on hanging around like a statue? I said, and he snapped. What did you just unleash, making a scene like that? Crying foul? All because you hooked up with your boss's girl, and she's expecting no less. Stumped by my response, he glanced downward. Then hit me with puppy dog eyes. You're not thinking about a divorce, are you? With all the dust settled, you've got to feel better. Amy needs both her parents. Sarah and I are done. We get a redo, right? More than Iyer, I was taken aback by his brazen plea. Did he honestly think we could just hit the reset button after all of that? The real reason he doesn't want to split is because Carlos is on to him about the affair. From the get-go, Arthur hasn't been making a lot of money, and after this mess, his job's probably on the line. If I go after him for alimony, his life's definitely taking a nosedive. That's his main reason for dodging a divorce. How self-absorbed is that? I let him have it. Cut the crap! We are getting divorced. There's no walking this back. I'll be coming for compensation from both you and Sarah. Plus, I want child support. Get ready. Hearing this, he just lost it, tears and all. Please don't go there. I'm really begging you here. My pay isn't great, and I swear I'm done straying. I'll do whatever you say from here out. I seriously messed up. Just think about the divorce. Why would I believe a word from you? You even spaced on Amy's birthday. A loser like you around isn't good for my daughter. Just steer clear of us, please. I brushed off his last-ditch efforts and split from the place alone. Down the line, Arthur and I went our separate ways. And Carlos and Sarah called off their wedding. I got compensation and child support out of Arthur, and naturally a chunk from Sarah too. He had to bow out of his job, given the whole boss's fiance turned baby mama situation. They ended up in debt, shelling out for Carlos's demands. Word is Arthur and Sarah got married because of the baby, but they are living in the red, dodging bill collectors. Frankly, I am unfazed hearing about it. They reaped what they sowed. As for me, I got custody of Amy and headed back to my folks' place. Amy's been the apple of her grandparents' eyes, and she's thriving. I've been living peacefully, shaking off all the Arthur drama. Going in alone with Amy, I'm all about keeping it positive.